Hello, my name is Lauren and welcome to the Theoretical YouTube channel where we have a weird one for you today. The last time we talked about Hermione Granger on this channel, I did my best to try and convince you that she was actually a sociopath and if you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend clicking the card right here. It's a good one, I like it. But today our question is a lot simpler. How old is she? And it seems like a ridiculous question. Not only does it change in every book, but what's so special about her age? It's not like she's extraordinarily old like Nicholas Fumel or even particularly young. No, what's weird about Hermione's age is that unlike almost every other character, it's not as simple as just finding her birthday and counting forwards. She has some unique experiences that make pinpointing exactly how old she is unusual. Time travel, guys, she's a time traveler. But of course it's not impossible to figure out how old she is, we just need to sit down and crunch some numbers. So one of the first things we have to understand about Hermione is that she's already one of the oldest students in her grade. In fact, she missed the cutoff for entering Hogwarts a year earlier than Harry and Ron by just 18 days. Hermione Jean Granger was born on September 19, 1979, and so she enters the school at age 11 in 1991 and then turns 12 like two weeks later. And no one ever celebrates her birthday, although to be fair, in Harry Potter, no one's birthday goes all that great anyway. But like I said, her age isn't dependent on her date of birth. I, I guess here's some context. When students at Hogwarts enter their third year, they have some options for elective courses to add to their schedule. These are Divination, Care of Magical Creatures, Ancient Runes, Arithmancy, and Muggle Studies. Students select two of the five in addition to the core classes that they're already taking. Charms, Transfiguration, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Potions, History of Magic, Astronomy, and Herbology. These 12 courses are specifically offered because they correlate with the Ordinary Wizarding Levels, or OWL exams, that students take in their fifth year. Ordinary Wizarding Level Examinations. W-L's, more commonly known as OWLs. Most students, like Harry Potter, take nine classes and nine tests. Whether or not they pass each one dictates which future classes are available to them at Hogwarts. But in total, the school offers 12 different OWL exams and classes for third through fifth year students. So theoretically, a student could take all 12 tests. This actually isn't that unrealistic. I knew a guy in high school who took nine AP tests our senior year. The school only offered seven periods a day. But even in the Harry Potter universe, getting 12 owls was actually a feat achieved by three known students. Bill Weasley, Percy Weasley, and Barty Crouch Jr. And for her third year of school, Hermione Granger tried to follow in their footsteps. Too indecisive to just choose two courses, Hermione signed up for all 12 during her third year. So, in order to make it to all of her classes, Professor McGonagall and the school administration decided to give her a time turner. A device that allows her to use time travel in order to be in two different places at once. I'd explain more, but that'd be like a whole nother video. But what's important to know now is that during her third year, Hermione's days were not limited to a 24-hour window. By repeating blocks of time over and over again, Hermione was fitting more time into what everyone else was perceiving as a single day. Her day was just a little bit longer. Now, humans age at a rate of one hour per hour, right? Everyone's clear on that? So naturally, people age 24 hours per day, but Hermione doesn't. She was fitting more hours into a day, aging during them all, and therefore getting older quicker, from everyone else's perspective. Time is relative and confusing. Hermione was gaining a few extra hours for an entire year, and remember, she only needed 18 days to be older than everyone else. So all we need to do is figure out how many extra hours Hermione lived, and the books actually give us a pretty good place to start. After all, we know Hermione wasn't making unnecessary trips back. 
You'd think that she'd use the extra hours to sleep or have extra study time, but she doesn't. She only ever uses the time turner to be in two classes at once. This is why she's tired and stressed the entire year. She technically has extra time, but she's not using it logically. Or is she? What if in addition to minimizing the chances of messing with the space-time continuum by being in the past for an unnecessary amount of time, Hermione has been instructed to make minimal jumps back in order to counteract this premature aging. So how many times does Hermione actually use the time-turner? And believe it or not, I think we can estimate this. Hermione's schedule is never actually shown in its entirety, but we do get brief glimpses throughout Prisoner of Azkaban. We note that at one point she has muggle studies, arithmancy, and divination all at the same time. And that charms must coincide with something else because that's the only class she ends up missing the entire year. Her exam schedule has arithmancy and transfiguration booked at the same time, as well as charms and ancient runes. So what we can gather from this somewhat limited information is that Hermione never has classes more than triple booked a day. Hogwarts classes are 45 minutes, I assume, since double classes are an hour and a half, so with a 15 minute passing period, Hermione needs two extra hours a day. I mean, she is taking three extra classes. So every day in the 1993-1994 school year, Hermione is using the time turner twice a day, gaining two hours on everyone else. And while I could show you footage of me counting every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from September 2nd till the end of the school year, I think you can just trust me on this one. But when is the end of school? Well, Hermione would have to be taking these jumps back all the way through the Hogwarts examination period, which always takes place in June, but we can narrow it down even further. The student's last exam is on the same day as Buckbeak's execution, which is said to be Thursday at 2. They've also been taking exams for the full week up until Thursday, and in 1994, the first full week of June started on the 6th. Thursday was there for the 9th of June, 203 days after the start of school. But we should also take some time off because Hogwarts observes both Christmas and Easter breaks, but we never get a precise number. So how about we estimate that it's about three weeks in total, so minus another 15 days, and that leaves 188 days of school. Then we multiply that number by the two trips Hermione makes a day to get 376 hours, plus the three it takes to save Buckbeak and Sirius giving us a grand total of 379 hours, or Hermione being a total of 15.8 days older than she should be. Okay, so she doesn't technically have to move up a year, she's still three days away from that original cutoff date. But what if I told you that it didn't even matter? That Hermione was never in danger of becoming too old by using time travel, even if she had been a little bit more reckless. Because even before she started messing with the fabric of time, Hermione's age was already difficult to calculate because of one specific event. Her petrification. After solving the mystery of the Basilisk in Chamber of Secrets, Hermione may have saved her own life, but the mirror's reflection still put her in a coma. Which wouldn't matter if this was a normal muggle coma, people still age during those, but this is a magic wizard coma. And it's a little ambiguous whether or not the victims are actually still aging. After all, before Harry Potter, a basilisk original power was to turn people to stone. Now, what is aging? On a scientific level, it has to do with cell growth and decay. And while the basilisk's victims aren't literally turned to stone, they don't appear to be functioning biologically. Their organs aren't working. They aren't breathing, their hearts aren't beating, so why would they be aging? It's kind of like being cryogenically frozen. Slowing down the process of decay to a halt for a temporary amount of time, only to be revived good as new? Hermione, welcome! This is a different kind of coma than the one Hermione experiences in Order of the Phoenix, where she just loses consciousness, not cell decay. But if we assume that petrified people don't age, that kind of throws a wrench in our calculations. How long was Hermione petrified? How long wasn't she aging in her second year? Well, we know that she was petrified on the day of the last Quidditch match of the season, since McGonagall cancelled Quidditch. They can't cancel Quidditch. Which was the Saturday after Easter break. 
1993, Easter was on April 11th, meaning that the next Saturday would be the 17th. Now, Hermione was de-petrified the same night that Ron and Harry rescued Ginny from the Chamber of Secrets. Because everything always happens all at once in a Harry Potter climax. Which all happens exactly three days before they're scheduled to take their exams. And earlier in the book, McGonagall straight up tells us that their first exam is on June 1st, meaning that everything went down May 28th. Or actually, the night of the 28th, which means that Hermione was actually woken up the next day on the 29th. Meaning that Hermione was petrified from April 17th to May 29th, or a total of 42 days. Now, if she lost 42 days and then only gained 15 back, that means that Hermione Granger is actually 27 days younger than it says on her birth certificate. And you know what? 42 days is a long time, but she was actually one of the last people to be petrified that year. What about someone like Colin Creevy? How long was he out of commission? Well, it's actually a lot harder to figure this one out because there's a bit more guessing involved. But we do know that Colin was petrified the Sunday after the first Quidditch match of the season, when Harry got his arm broken. In the following week, the trio start working on the Polyjuice Potion, which they end up using on Christmas Eve. Which is a potion with a pretty strict time constraint, since Hermione points out that the Lacewing Flies take 21 days to prepare. Then there's an unspecified time jump to the second week of December, specifically a Thursday. This is the day Hermione steals the last of the ingredients from Snape, bicorn hair, and boomslang skin, but not lacewing flies. So they've already been acquired and started brewing. Hermione says that the potion will be ready in two weeks, which is exactly December 24th, and that it was already halfway done. So, going back two weeks from the second Thursday in December, we land on Thursday the 26th of November. The Sunday before that was the 22nd, but let's give them another week to gather more of the ingredients. So, Colin Groovy was probably petrified from November 15th, 1992 until May 29th, 1993, or a total of 195 days. That's more than half a year, give or take a week. So yeah, Harry Potter ages are weird. Who knew? So when do you guys think people stopped calling Hermione the brightest witch of her age? Like, ah yes, Hermione Granger, the smartest 37-year-old I know. It's gotta get weird at some point, right? Anywho, what did you think of today's video? I know that you probably weren't curious before, but personally, I think this was a really fun project to try and figure out. If you agree, why don't you consider liking this video or subscribing to the channel if you haven't already? We do this kind of nerdy stuff all the time. Our Harry Potter theories are pretty great if you ask me. You can also follow us on Twitter at theory underscore central. Twitter, the social media site for people too young for Facebook and too old for TikTok. Also politics and memes. And that's about all we have for you today, so thanks for watching. Hermione Granger needs to stop slipping into comas, and I'll see you later. What a load of rubbish. Where did you come from?